So welcome to my talk. Uh, thank you for coming here. Um, it should have taken place yesterday. I had a little bit of a upset stomach. So now uh, is the time for command line applications in a breeze. Uh, I'm going to show you how to write command line applications with very little effort. Uh, and well, that's the subtitle of the talk, or how I stopped worrying and started to write command line applications. Uh, I demand we need more applications on CPAN. Why? Uh, because uh, they do attract new users uh, from outside of the Perl community. Uh, if they're looking for some kind of problem solution, then they might stumble upon your uh, application. Uh, and these users will eventually become contributors um, if they're missing some features or find bugs. Um, and of course, applications are a great way of exploring CPAN. Uh, if you have uh, an application, just add a command line interface to it. Uh, or just if you have a module on CPAN, just add a command line interface to it. And now users can install your uh, module and play around with it without having to write a single line of code. Um, and it's also a bonus feature. Uh, well, and how do we write uh, applications? Uh, well, reusable web application bundling with your modules is kind of hard. There are many frameworks for that, and it takes a lot of effort, so rather not. Uh, this is also true for uh, GUI interfaces. You don't want to bundle a GUI interface with your CPAN module. But uh, writing common line and adding an additional common line interface uh, to your module, to your existing module, is not much of an effort. So let's try that. Uh, but some of you might say, oh, it's still a lot of effort to add a common line interface to an existing module. Everybody can write it. Uh, I mean, everybody can use your code anyhow, so why should I bother? Um, I tell you, it's not a lot of effort if you're doing it uh, the right way. Um, well, it depends. At least a very subjective uh, version of Right. So uh, let's add a common line interface to your module. Uh, of course, you don't have to start from scratch. Uh, there are many tools available from CPAN. Uh, well, this is Perl after all. Uh, and uh, as you can see, there are quite a few uh, modules getdop, getdoplong, musix getdop, opcommand, musix opcommand, muix uh, option. Uh, and many, many more, uh, which I kindly, uh, which I decide to ignore here. Um, of course, uh, which ones should I use? Uh, there are several dozens of modules in CPAN. Uh, well, I will focus on all Moose-related modules. Um, therefore, I also assume basic Moose knowledge in the audience. Uh, uh, why? Uh, well, there, I heard a lot of criticism regarding common line applications and Moose because of the startup speed. Yes, it is an issue. Uh, it, Moose adds a half a second of startup time to your application. Um, but on the other hand, uh, Moose offers me uh, unique introspection capabilities uh, that allow me to generate a common line interface with uh, very little additional information. So I don't have to specify which accessories I do want to expose and stuff like that. Uh, I can just reuse uh, all the attributes uh, defined in your class and introspect them, get the documentation, if they're required or not, and stuff like that. Um, so let's... Uh, I'm going to introduce Musix Getopt, uh, which is great. I love it. I have used it uh, several times. Um, it simply exposes all your attributes uh, defined in your class to a command line interface. 
And that's how some typical music scatter code would uh, look like. Just add with uh, music scatter, just load the getup role, define some attributes as you would do, and you have to, of course, have a method that actually does something. Can be called run, execute, whatever you like. And then in some invocation script, you just call new with options. It's an alternative constructor that reads uh, all the input from, from the user. And then on this object, you just call run. Uh, of course, it also has some downsides. It exposes all of your attributes, uh, which is often not what you want. Uh, because you can have some internal attributes uh, that you don't want to expose. Of course, there is the option of uh, adding special traits to those uh, attributes you don't want to be exposed. But uh, again, it's, a lot of, uh, it's an extra effort to mark those as please don't expose them. And if they're coming from somewhere deep in your uh, application, then it's also uh, quite hard. Uh, and what I don't like about music's get up, it exits. Uh, if an input error occurs, uh, I don't want that. I don't want modules to exit. Uh, and it's not very customizable. And not particularly user friendly because uh, there are some uh, options, uh, some things it does not show to the user. For example, if uh, an attribute is required or not, uh, if it requires an integer or if it requires a string or if it's a flag and so on and so forth. Um, so I'm going also to introduce musix up command, uh, which uh, basically what it does is you have a base class and in the base class namespace, you have multiple subclasses, and it turns each of those subclasses into a distinct command. Uh, so that's how a typical Musix up command uh, applica uh, application would look like. Just uh, create a base class, uh, add this line, extend Musix up command, and then create multiple command classes. That would be, for example, a command called push, uh, which has to inherit from musix up command, command, command. Uh, and uh, of course, you have to implement some kind of execute or run method. And as a last step, you need an invocation script, uh, script which uh, would contain this line. And now, if your user types in my app, uh, Let's assume that the invocation script is called my app. Um, if you type my app push, uh, then it would call the command class push and would assign test to this attribute called atr. So, and again, music sub command has a couple of downsides, uh, which I don't like. Uh, since it uses music get opt under the hood, it has the same problems as music get opt. And uh, those commands are not easily reusable, uh, reusable and hard to test. And it, due to the inheritance, uh, it forces a certain application structure. Uh, and, well, I have a solution for that that is called musix up. And it's quite customizable through plugins. Um, the classes are reusable, so uh, you can use uh, all the classes in an uh, command line interface context and in just ordinary context. Uh, it has a single class and multi class command uh, mode, uh, so it can replace music's get up and music's up command. And it's quite user friendly, at least I claim so. And it's non-polluting because uh, most methods live in the meta class, not in the class itself. 
So, let's have a look at it. Um, that's how a typical musix up command class would look like. Um, so, you, what you do is load musix up and uh, specify all the plugins as a list. And then, instead of has, you say option. So, only uh, those attributes declared with uh, option are exposed to the command line interface. Uh, basically, it's just syntactic sugar, and it's just adding a trait to an attribute. Uh, so, it has plugins, uh, options, and I have defined this option in my base class, so it's a global attribute. So, let's have a look at a command class. It's also called push. Um, it extends uh, my app, but this is purely optional. So, you don't have to do that. Just in this case, I wanted to reuse uh, all the global, uh, the global attributes, but this also can be done via roles and stuff like that. So it's purely optional. Uh, and then it does quite a lot of introspection. So it reads uh, the default value, the, the type constraints, the documentation, and presents uh, them to the user asking for help. Uh, and that's how an invocation script would look like. Basically, just the same as um, music's up command. And the only difference is uh, that if new with command fails, it does not exit, just as the other two would do, but it returns uh, an object, which is a null class object containing uh, an error message. And therefore, because it, it uh, adheres to the null class pattern, you can call any methods on it. So you don't have to care if new with command was successful or not. So and that's basically how the output from uh, my little application would look like. If I just type in my app uh, on a command line, would see missing command in, in uh, bold and red because I'm using the color plugin. Um, and then it would add this config option, uh, which is due to the usage of the config plugin, uh, which allows you to have configuration files. And of course, there is this help attribute uh, which lets the user request help. And here, the documentation is taken from, from the pod of the file or uh, can be specified via the meta class. Yes? Does it tell you the default value in the help as well? Um, not in this help, okay. but in the next, uh, if you say my app push, because that's the help for just the push option, then it would say, default local, yeah. And of course it also says that it, this is required, it's an integer, and this one is just a flag. Uh, and here you also have the pot. Uh, as I already mentioned before, uh, there is also a single command mode, uh, which would look like this. Uh, just, just basically have one class, uh, but instead of using Musix up, uh, you use Musix up simple. And uh, there again, you can use all the plugins you were using. Uh, well, all old plugins that do not add extra commands. Obviously, they don't work here. But besides that, uh, with this option, you would have just a single command. And of course, a simple invocation script. This time, new with options. The first one was new with commands. And that's how uh, the output would look like if you requested help. Um, so let's discuss uh, how to add a command line interface to an existing uh, module or application. 
So, for example, if you have something on, already on CPAN, which is called my module, uh, then you might just add uh, an additional class, which would be called uh, my module command line or whatever you fancy. Uh, just use musix up command simple and extend your, uh, the mod your module. And then, of course, you have to uh, specify which of, these, of the attributes already present in your, uh, in your class should be exposed to the command line. This is done simply by uh, writing option and the plus syntax, which just, uh, which just adds uh, or extends uh, attributes in Moose. Uh, and of course, you might also need uh, extra attributes, which only make sense in the command line uh, context. For example, some attributes which uh, control the way the output or uh, stuff like that. So, you can add extra options here, and then you need, of course, a run method, and then you're basically done. So, very little effort. You uh, gain a command line interface. Uh, well, let's get to the summary. Um, there is a single and a multi-command line mode. Uh, there are quite a few plugins already available uh, and more to come. So as you already have seen the color, the config plugin, there is a plugin for bash completion, which you can copy to your uh, bash comp uh, to your configuration. Um, then there is one very nice plugin which uh, allows you to read c options or attributes from the environment. Uh, and there is fuzzy com uh, command name matching with, uh, and stuff like that and more to come. And it's quite easy to write your own plugins. There is a comprehensive tutorial uh, included in the distribution. And there's also a basic tutorial how to get you started with your own command line application. And I'm plan planning to extend uh, to add uh, localization functionality uh, in the not too distant future, which might be of some interest to you. So, thanks. <laughs> Wait. <laughs> Not, not quite finished. What about the output? <laughs> uh, I did not mention it here. Well, uh, I did not mention it here because there is no one-size-fits-it-all solution. Uh, because simply, your output might be different if, you're, uh, run, if your program is run interactively or not, and stuff like that. So what I recommend is, if you don't want to put much effort in it, just dump it as Yammer, and then you're done. Or uh, what I have done a couple of times, just add some kind of introspection and print it out as a big text table thing, and then you're basically done. So thank you again. <laughs>